Good evening. Hello. Testing. We're here. We're here for Monday Manna. Anointed Temple of Praise Outreach Ministries. We're here for uh, our weekly Bible study at 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. We're studying the book of Ezekiel. And so we're getting ready to get started. We're going to give you a few minutes to hop on, log on, click, tag, and share your friends and family members and let them know that we're getting ready to start Bible study. We're studying the book of Ezekiel. We're in chapter number 25. Um, we'll start with chapter 25 in the book of Ezekiel tonight. So click, tag, and share with your friends, and let's get ready. All right. Well, this is a beautiful day here in the city of Memphis. Um, and many people are trying to get outside from being under quarantine and trying to uh, get back to what they uh, are calling a new normal. And they are opening up most of the uh, states all across um, the United States. But we are moving real slow here, Lady Kim, and we're not really in a hurry to try to get back. Uh, we want to make sure that people understand the lives of, of people uh, first and foremost and what we're trying to accomplish. I believe there's a, another wave that's going to happen uh, with this virus and we want to err on the side of, um, of right and on the side of uh, caution when it comes to this virus because it's something new. It's something that we've never experienced before. And so um, we are the um, most vulnerable uh, uh, race of people when it comes to this virus. And so we've got to be very, 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 very cautious because um, many people are not uh, following the guidelines or the mandates that have been established. And people think everything is fine. And uh, I saw a couple of people out today. Well, I saw quite a few people as I was moving about out, didn't have their protection on. You know, they were just kind of enjoying the day. No mask. No mask. But we got to make sure that we're covered. And so um, we praise God for each of you. Y'all go ahead and let us know where you're coming in from. We see people are coming in. And we're certainly grateful. Just tell us where you are. Uh, viewing from. Uh, we certainly thank God for those of you uh, here in the Memphis area, but we do have others who are outside of the Memphis area, no doubt, that will be joining us. And we're going to start with chapter number 25, the second part of this study in the book of Ezekiel. There's three parts, and praise God, we've already covered the first part, the first uh, 24 chapters, and so the next uh, few chapters in the second part deals with chapter 25 through 39. I hope and pray that you are reading, that you're studying God's word. We're just going to give you a brief synopsis of what's happening in this book. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of uh, what you might call mysteries and visions and symbolism and parables and even allegories that's happening in this book. And it really stretches your mind. And this is a book that you just don't readily go through. You have to take your time and walk through this particular book in order to get a full understanding. But I want to encourage you to get your good study Bible. Don't just rely on uh, your phone or your, your tablet, but get your good study Bible and spend some quality time studying God's word and trying to find out what God's word is yet saying to you. And I believe we're going to be better as a result because I believe, Lady Kim, a lot of what we see in Ezekiel is relevant to what we're going through today. Absolutely. Yes, it is. A lot of people are responding. Uh, someone from Los Angeles, California is on. Okay. And then somebody said they're on all the way from Hickory Hill. Hickory Hill. Where is that? <laughs> Where in the world is Hickory Hill? Around the corner. Right around the corner. Praise God. Olive Branch, Mississippi. Olive Branch. All right. Uh, which is around the corner. Yeah. Uh, thank you for joining us in Birmingham, Alabama. All right. Um, good evening to all those that are right here in Memphis, our church family. Thank you for joining tonight. Amen. Okay. And normally what we do, we start out with um, a word of prayer, and then we give reflections on uh, what happened in worship on uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. 
and we want to make sure that we allow what we receive to to be relevant to our own lives and we I believe each time the word of God goes forth there should be a couple of nuggets or a couple of handles that we receive as a result of that word is that right lady Kim absolutely your phone is going off and your watches going off you got all kind of devices that's going off I thought I had silenced it I'm sorry that's all right lady Kim just recently joined the uh, Apple Watch uh, crew and uh, she was a reluctant uh, participant and we pulled her on in she's uh, what's that thing you used to always have a Fitbit a Fitbit that's right she's a Fitbit uh, fan but uh, we brought her on in and she's just uh watching her watch, she's breathing and she's doing all kind of things and watching her steps. And she said she didn't want to put it on at night because she didn't want people knowing about <laughs> how, her sleep habits. <laughs> so, but she's she's in the crowd now, she's in the group uh, with the Apple Watch. And so we praise God for that. But Lady Kim, let's have a word of prayer. And then uh, I'll give you an opportunity to just share a little bit about what you received from the message on yesterday. And then we'll say say a little bit about giving some handles for uh, this book of Ezekiel. Some people are joining us uh, for the first time. We want to just give you a little recap about some of the things that has happened in this particular book. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We do thank you for this day. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for being our God. We thank you for continuing to cover us and keep us during this season of uncertainty. And God, we know that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above any and everything that we can ever ask or think. We lift up those who are viewing on this particular uh, medium tonight. And we pray to the Lord that you will keep them in your care, that you will cover them, that you will protect them, that you, O oh God, will allow them to feel your power and your presence even during this time of study. God, you've already promised that your word would not return unto your void, that it's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. So we believe tonight that your word is going to accomplish exactly what you have intended for it to accomplish. So we love you tonight. We honor you. We pray that needs will be met tonight, God, just because we dared to trust you and to open your word. Faith indeed cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So somebody's faith is going to go to another level tonight because they dared to study your word. So give us strength where we're weak even now and encourage us even as we go through this study. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and praise God. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Do some thumbs up or something right there. <laughs> Give God some praise. That's right. That's amen. right. All right. Well, Lady Kim, um, tell us a little bit about what happened in the worship experience on yesterday. Well, you preach from the um, theme of biblical vaccine for COVID-19, which okay. was a good rhyming. It had a little rhyme it had to it. It had a little it. rhyme yeah. to it, yes. Yeah. And um, your... Um, what scripture was it from? It was Philippians, it was Philippians 4. Philippians 4, mm -hmm. 4 through 7. seven. Yes. 4 through 7. Yes. Yes. And it talked about, um, you know, when we go through trials and tribulations, mm -hmm. the, the first thing we need to do is rejoice. It That's says right. rejoice in the Lord always. Mm -hmm. And again, I say rejoice. Right. So it says that two times. Rejoice always. Mm -hmm. Again, rejoice. Right. So whenever you face trials and tribulations, um, we need to rejoice. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to rejoice during a time of, of, of trouble, okay. during a time of sorrow, during a time of hardship. That's right. It's hard to rejoice. But we can rejoice knowing that uh, God has um, a, a plan for our lives. Okay, okay. That nothing we go through takes God by surprise. Mm -hmm. That whatever we go through will be good for us in the end. And sometimes it's hard to see that, um, but um, when we come out on the other side, right. we'll see the hand, of, how the hand of God has moved on our life. Mm -hmm. So we can rejoice even um, in our times of sorrow. We can rejoice even in our times of tribulation because we know that God's ultimate will and plan will be good for us. Okay, okay. 
You sound like you were listening yesterday, really. I was. That, you you I was. grabbed a couple of nuggets from that sermon. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, people are talking about the vaccine and when we will get a vaccine for this virus. And uh, we fail oftentimes to realize that we have a biblical vaccine already in place. And if we get into this word, if we apply this word, if we believe God's word, if we study this word, God will get us through this. God's yes, going to see us through. Yes, and uh, I believe that uh, James says, count it all joy, even as you go through trials wow. and tribulation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith Amen. is what worketh patience. Yes. And let patience have a perfect work that you might be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. I say often, Lady Kim, that a faith that's not tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. And so sometimes people don't want to go through anything. People don't want to be uh, in the fire. I know if we had a, a, a choice, we say we want the, the road uh, less travel. We want to go the easy route. easy route. We don't want to go up in the rough sides of the mountain. We don't want to be in the valley experiences. But all of that, I believe, God uses to help uh, develop our faith and help make makes us strong, make us strong for what he yet has in store for us. Yes, it's, it's what shapes our character. Mm-hmm. And not only does it shape our character, it strengthens our faith. Okay. Um, because if we never go through anything, we wouldn't have to depend on God That's right. for anything. Um, the song says, if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve it. Wow. I wouldn't know what faith in God would do. Mm-hmm. So we have to have trials and tribulations because it builds our character it builds our strength in god and it builds our faith that's right that's right so rejoice in the lord always 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 and again i say rejoice yeah and so uh anything else you would like to share Uh, yeah then you say let your behavior reflect who you are okay so you know in every case we need to um our behavior needs to be be becoming of Christ. Okay. And sometimes that's hard to do because right. we all, you know, some people say wake up on the wrong side of the bed. Mm-hmm. But my mother used to say if you woke up on the wrong side of the bed, you need to push your bed against the side of the wall that's wrong <laughs> so you can get up on the right <laughs> side. Okay. <laughs> but, okay. um, um, you know, sometimes we, we can get a little out of sorts. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but when we calm down and we come to our senses, we need to understand that our behavior needs to reflect who we say we are. Okay. So if you've gone off on somebody, if you, you know, having a bad day per se, you need to go back and apologize, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to go back and let people know that um, how, how you feel about the situation but you know you don't have to act out of sorts okay so um there's always we have to rise above our circumstances uh uh first lady michelle obama used to say when they go low we go high right we stay right. high so That's right. never let anyone bring you down to their level okay always you know represent christ and represent him well that's good. That's mm-hmm. a good word. So let your behavior re- reflect who you say you are. Okay. And then the last one is don't be anxious. Don't be anxious. Don't be anxious. Okay. Yeah. It's Relax. Easy. Huh? Yeah. It's easy to be anxious. It's easy to be afraid when you don't see how how ends are going to meet. Those who have lost jobs, uh, who don't have income, you're anxious. You don't know how you're going to feed your family. You don't know how the bills are going to be paid. Mm-hmm. But God... Um, is going to see you through this too. That's right. You know, some some of us are in unfamiliar territory. This has never happened before. That's right. Um, you've never been without income before. You've never been uh, low in your pantry before. But God is just giving you this opportunity to learn to trust and depend on him more. Okay. I was talking to one of the members today, and uh, I, I sensed some anxiety. But I told him, just settle down, center yourself, trust God. You know, you, it's going to be all right because he, he has a business. He's trying to make sure that he gets all of his things lined up and waiting on some things to happen. But God already knows what we're going through. Mm-hmm. He already knows uh, where we are, and he's willing to enable to meet us even in the midst of our struggles. And sometimes we have to get ourselves, and God uh, sometimes allows some things to happen so that our faith can be stretched and so that we can grow mm-hmm. because that other song says each victory will help you 
some other to win. Mm -hmm. That's not the title of that song, yeah. but that's a verse right. in that. Is it Ask the Savior to Help You? Uh, What's the name of that song? Lean Not to Temptation. Lean, uh, yield Not yield to, not to Temptation. All right, you yeah. created a new song. <laughs> lean, lean. <laughs> yield Not to Temptation. Okay. That's the name. Yield of the song. Not to Temptation. That's what them old songs say. Yeah. I tell you, we were on the call yesterday with uh, our brother, my brother in Indianapolis. He was celebrating uh, 71st birthday, and his daughter did a Zoom call. And uh, one of my cousins, he, he said, you look just like uh, Aunt Berta. You know, not Berta, but, um, uh, wow, I can't even think of her name now. But And I looked at Pearl yesterday, and I said, man, she sure does look just like her, you mm -hmm. know. And so um, we have to continue. And they, they used to sing those old songs, Reverend. They, it, we grew up on those songs. And you know how Dad used to sing those old hymns of the church and he'd get happy. And sometimes they, the musician or the pianist was plunking on the piano, but church was stirring and the fire was moving mm -hmm. and the Holy Ghost was having its way. Amen. And those were some great times in the Lord. Let me just give you a little recap. We're, we're in the book of Ezekiel. Now, I pulled out my uh, my leadership Bible, Lady Kim, and this is an excellent too because it gives you a perspective in terms of how leaders ought to respond to what uh, the word is being, uh, what the word is uh, saying here. It gives you a principle, it gives you a summary, and then it gives you an a glance of what's going on. Uh, it says, it, as it relates to the principle, the limits of human perspective render uh, us all, leaders and followers alike, ulti ultimately and uh, utterly dependent upon God's omniscient uh, counsel. So whether you're a follower, whether you're a leader, uh, when you go through different situations, uh, you're gonna have to see God in that if, you're going, if you wanna come out victorious. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's difficult for people to understand that, especially when their backs up against the wall and they're in unfamiliar territory and they're experiencing something they never experienced, they want to go back and revert back to what they're accustomed to and see if they can get out by themselves in the way they think they ought to get out. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the principles. But just a little summary here. We know that Ezekiel was a prophet and he was a priest of God. Yeah during Judah's captivity in Babylon and uh, described by God as a watchman on the wall. A watchman on the wall, that's powerful, isn't it? Yeah. And Ezekiel, uh, it says here that he exalted God's stubborn people, warning them of Jerusalem impending destruction and reminding the exiles that God expected their obedience and their worship. You know, sometimes we, we just want to do one or the other. Right. But God wants us not only to worship him, mm -hmm. but he wants us to be obedient okay. to him. And I believe that obedience brings the reward. Amen. And then it goes on to say here about some of the things that we can benefit from. Ezekiel, it says, it's an extraordinary book of mystery, vision, symbolism, parables, allegories, that stretch our minds regarding God's glory and his, his majestic splendor while inviting us to stand in awe and hope in him. Mm -hmm. So uh, God's going to show himself strong on our behalf. He, he will do some things that will really blow our minds. And, but we, could, we have to keep our hope and our trust in him. Our hope should build, be built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And as the song say, on Christ. Isn't, mm -hmm. that, isn't that the way it go? Uh -huh. The solid the rock, rock I stand. stand. Is Miss Myra on the phone? All other ground. All other ground. Insane. Yeah, she's there. She yeah. says, they were wilderness travelers. Mm -hmm. They were wilderness travel. That's mm -hmm. what this book was all about. Yes. And uh, God was instructing and using Ezekiel during this process to uh, give the people encouragement and to give them hope. But a lot of people were disobedient and they fell uh, in the hands of an angry God. Mm -hmm. And God had gotten to the point where he was willing to uh, do what he needed to do in order for them to understand who he was because they mm -hmm. obviously had forgotten about what God had done and who he was. Absolutely, absolutely. So in this book of Ezekiel, um, 
was that your summary yes. for Ezekiel? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, in this book of Ezekiel, the 25th chapter, mm -hmm. well, in the second part, um, we see a series of revelations from God um, addressed to foreign nations. Okay. So this part, uh, Ezekiel is going to have these visions or God is going to speak to him uh, concerning foreign nations. What foreign nations? Amnon, Am Amnon, uh, Moab, Edom, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a Philistine, Tyre, um, um, Sidon. He's going to mm -hmm. speak to Ezekiel about all these foreign nations. Right. And uh, God gave Ezekiel a message to give to those surrounding foreign nations. Okay. And in the uh, 25th chapter, uh, the message for Amnon or the, the Amorites, mm -hmm. uh, they were the enemies of Israel for years and they sided with Nebuchadnezzar against Judah. Right. And uh, God brought judgment on Jerusalem and his people. Um, so um, he, uh, God told Ezekiel to face Amnon and preach against the people because they have cheered when uh, the sanctuary was desecrated or when the sanctuary was destroyed. So mm -hmm. God was angry with them because they had destroyed and desecrated his sanctuary. Okay. And he told um, uh, Ezekiel to speak to the people because of this. Um, this will be the end of the Amorites That's at this right. point. That's right. uh, Nebuchadnezzar went on a siege of all the adjoining nations um, and, you know, um, and, and destroyed them. Mm -hmm. So the, the next several chapters, like 25, 26, and 27, specifically God speaks to Ezekiel telling him, what he's going to do to these nations because of their disobedience and because of their disrespect for God. Okay, okay. And uh, there, there that word is again, disobedience. Mm -hmm. And God wants uh, obedience and he wants our worship. And we talked a little bit last week about partial obedience. It's nothing, uh, no, it's, 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 it's everything um, that disobedience is. Partial obedience is really not obedience at all. It's total disobedience. It's total disobedience. Right. That's right. Yeah. And so sometimes people want to render to God partial obedience and think that's what God requires of them. Mm -hmm. But in, in reality, they are being disobedient. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. So uh, what, what happens in this next part? Uh, this is... We're going to move to chapter 26. We're in chapter 26 of Ezekiel, and we're giving you just a framework of what happens in these chapters. And uh, if you have comments, we're going to be looking at our phones to see if there are some questions. We want to make sure that, uh, and if you have a comment that you want to uh, share, we'll see if we can pick that up as well. Yes, and, and don't forget to, um, yes, make a comment on the screen, and we'll try to reply to those comments and as pastor said we're just doing a uh, a summary of each chapter so we hope you will read the chapters uh during your time at home uh during your meditation and reading time um but in chapter 26 uh it's talking to the nation of uh i guess it's ty some people say tyree some people say tyra uh -huh. or tyre yeah. um the message is for tyre that god will break down tire to nothing he's gonna just completely utter them and utterly destroy tire right uh, before tires destruction it was one of the richest cities in the east um and was pleased to see the fall of jerusalem and did not want to be second to, to jerusalem in population and one of the reasons why god destroyed them uh and had the babylonians come against tire uh because it was a renowned city uh it it they um it was a great city right. of uh agriculture right. not agriculture but uh import and exports import, import and export. yeah mm -hmm. it was a great city of import and exports they they um and i'm getting into chapter uh, 27 now that before the destruction it was an island off the coast and it was supposed to have been the great city of that day for merchants of the sea. Mm -hmm. So people came in, they brought their uh, imports with them, spices and gold and silver, and in exchange uh, in Tyra, people would exchange and they would export goods to other foreign nations. That's right. So they, the people in Tyre felt like they were, um, they were proud, they were mm -hmm. boastful. They, mm -hmm. they thought they had it going on. You know, we are beautiful, 
city on, on the sea, beautiful island on the sea. We have a beautiful city. Look what we've done. They're right. boasting with their chest stuck out. Um, but God is uh, is angry with them. Um, their destruction is going to come. Okay. And one of the things you mentioned there, and, and I know you're moving through 27 now. One of the things you mentioned is that uh, Tyre was one of the richest cities during that particular day and time. Mm -hmm. And many times when we look at how that can relate to us, oftentimes we put our trust in riches and it can cause us to lose sight of what uh, God's will is for our lives. I think in Matthew 6 and 33, it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto us. Right. And so we reverse that oftentimes. We want to put the things in front of uh, the will of God and the righteousness of God, and we end up worshiping the things that we have accumulated, the things that we have put ahead of God instead of rendering that uh, worship and that obedience to God. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And and just like in the uh, city of Tyre, you know, uh, those nations uh, did business and they traded with Tyre. Mm -hmm. You know, nations do business with our nation. That's right. You know, and I think over the years uh, here in the United States, we had gotten our chest poked out and we had gotten the big head that look at what we're doing for the world. But God is now showing us how dependent or interdependent we are upon each other during this pandemic. That uh, no nation is an island by itself. No man is an island by itself. No people are islands by themselves. That we all need each other. We're going through the same thing at the same exact time. And, and I think God had to take us through this to show us how dependent we are on each other and that mm -hmm. we need to be honest with one another so that we can um, so that we can find some way to combat this virus and uh, get our nation or get get the people of this world back on track back on track mm -hmm. and it's amazing how this whole uh, uh, COVID-19 has forced us to do some things that we were neglecting or not willing to do when we had all of the time in the world. Mm -hmm. But now that God has settled us and shut us in and caused us to not be able to move around and do all of the other things. And you know, Lady Kim, I was saying during the offering time yesterday, some people have not had an opportunity to go to their shopping sprees and the shopping malls and stuff. And we've seen a spike in, in, in the offering. I don't know if that was attributed to the fact that People say, well, I can't go shopping right now, so I put an extra $5, I put an extra $10 here, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that as a result of us being under this quarantine, that the principles that are in place and the disciplines that have been established, even when it comes to our giving, will continue to go forth when we this covering is lifted and this... Uh, this time is lifted for us to go back into mm -hmm. the new normal. Well, I stopped to get gas today. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing, um, you know, since I haven't been going to work, I say because I usually fill up uh, on gas once, at least once a week, if okay. not more. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't gotten gas, and this is the first time I've gotten gas in three weeks. What? And not only did I have I not gotten gas in three weeks, my tank was a little below half, and when I filled up, it was seventeen dollars. Wow! So the price of gas has fallen, uh, as well as me not driving. So that leaves, if I think about it, that leaves a lot of extra money because I was paying about thirty dollars, thirty to thirty-five dollars for a full tank of gas. Now I just paid seventeen dollars for for some gas uh, over the past three over the past weeks. three weeks. So if I think about that, that's about ninety dollars that I was spending minus that seventeen. That's seventy dollars right there. That I, about seventy dollars. Right. Just estimate. Uh, uh, Miss Myra, so, Miss Myra, I'm trying now. You you said I'd be throwing Lady Kim under the bus. So we're gonna see a, a what? A an increase. A seventy dollar increase. An this increase time. All right. in giving. Just, that's I'm right. Just, well, I I increased the giving last time. Okay. Sunday. All right. Yes, All I right. did All on right. yesterday. Peace. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm saying those are some ways that's right. That's that right. we can continue to give 
you know, and be obedient in our giving. Right. Um, I saw on here that um, someone said that uh, America mirrors uh, Tyre in that it's uh, said to be one of the richest uh, countries in the, in in the nation. That's right. You know, we're one of the richest countries in the nation. Um, yet and still, I think God is not pleased with with what we're doing right, and how right, we're acting. Right. So He's taking this time during this pandemic uh, to let us see ourselves. And nothing better than holding a mirror up to yourself to see what how you can improve and to see how God dealt with Tyre and of uh, the surrounding nations mm -hmm. uh, here in, his, in the book of Ezekiel, so the same thing won't happen to us. That's right. What's true uh, that they said in the past is there's nothing new under the sun. Okay. Anything that's happening now is happened in the past, okay. and we can find it all in the Bible. Okay, so that's where that relevance and the connection comes when it relates to... Uh, well, what's the worry for us during this season as we study Ezekiel? Mm -hmm. Then God always has uh, some relevance that we can apply and to our own situations mm -hmm. as we go through his word. And uh, it's for our examples. It's for us to not make the same mistakes that those in the past made. And then uh, a lot of times it's just like when um, children are growing up, they, you tell them not to do this, not to do that. They almost have to experience it and try it for themselves and see, okay, uh, mom, dad were telling me right. Just like God is saying, you know, don't do this, don't do that. Then what do we do? We go do this, we go do that, and we find out that uh, we hurt ourselves, we, we fall back, we punish ourselves, and then God uh, puts us in a situation where we have to learn a lesson the hard way, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, the school of hard knocks is that mm -hmm. what they call it yeah and so many times we learn lessons the hard way when if we're just obedient I believe um, we can experience God's grace and his mercy uh, as we go through Amen. Amen. all right so where are we in chapter 28 yes all right how's everybody doing y'all doing all right out there can y'all hear us okay somebody let us know y'all can hear and uh, we see quite a few people watching, quite a few people online. Good to see many of you. If there are any prayer requests, if there are any um, uh, praise reports, then we want to hear those, and we're going to have prayer here in a little bit. But I was thinking, Lady Kim, as you were talking about how this season has forced us to do some things that we normally wouldn't be doing, just like with our outreach. I, I tell you, it was tremendous how we connected with the Mid-South Food Bank and how we were being able to be a blessing to uh, the people that were in need and uh, not once but twice and over 300 how many was it uh, 1300 families that we were able to be a blessing to and then we saw a lot of volunteers that uh, probably would normally have the time to do that with their work schedules and with the business of life. I tell you, people were out there, and it was amazing how the the young people, then people from Lowe's, and the members were there. And and uh, that last shift, it, it got kind of rough this last time because we we had eight hundred the last this last time, but the first time we had like five, mm -hmm. and then. I think it, they got a little tired because that's a lot of lifting, a lot of putting food in boxes. And uh, But the people stood tall and they stayed, even during the rain. It rained for a minute and then the sun came out. But people were steadfast in the midst of that all. And it, it almost uh, put us in a place of doing what we call ourselves, you know, who we call ourselves mm -hmm. as believers. Mm -hmm. That outreach piece. That's correct. That's not a part of the lesson, but I just wanted to throw that in. So you can, uh, I know this whole 28th chapter, it deals with, um, and I, this one of the things struck struck me here where it talks about the, uh, a great responsibility goes with the honor of leadership. So whenever there is a leader in place, uh, there is responsibility that's attached to uh, the leadership of that person. And so it goes on to say here that the city suffers because of leaders' personal evil. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know a lot of people, when I said that, probably are thinking about 
uh, the president in chief that's in the White House now because a lot of people are suffering because of his personal evil. And uh, the evil of the leader will flow down to the people. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important for us as believers to study to show ourselves approved unto God, to trust the timing of God, to believe that God's going to see us through this, through this whole pandemic that we're going through. Because this leader, during this particular time, he had highly exalted himself. Mm -hmm. And so many times when people get full of themselves mm -hmm. and they start thinking more highly of themselves than they ought, mm -hmm. then they exhaust themselves. But Matthew, I looked it up, 23 and 12 says, he who exalts himself uh, will be humble, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Amen. And so we have to be mindful of that because the Amplified Bible says they will be uh, humble before others. Mm -hmm. So if we highly exalt ourselves, then God will have a way of, of in the face of everybody that mm -hmm. we try to uh, misuse and abuse and cause evil. He will cause us to be humble right before that same crowd. And then he who humbles himself, it talks about he who keeps a realistic uh, self view. In other words, a modest uh, opinion of himself mm. or herself. That's the person that God can use in a powerful and a mighty way. Amen. And it's a lot of people who uh, have have not uh, taken the debate of you know when they get a little prestige or when they get a little leadership or when they get a little money or when they get uh, a little rank and file they don't lose their minds. They don't start thinking more highly of themselves than they ought. Yeah. Because um, there's an old saying that uh, uh, hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. And I think the same is true with uh, evil people. Mm -hmm. Evil people will what? What will you put it there? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, well now let's do it will. this way. Evil leaders produce evil people. Mm. But see, that's why it's that's important good. for us to that's be right. consciously aware of what God requires of us. So that when we have a corrupt leader or when we have somebody who's going astray and not being obedient to the precepts of God, then we know and something will be alerted in our spirit that this is not right. right. And confirmation will come when a person is uh, seeking God's will and they're following God's precepts and they'll be obedient to his word, you'll feel that in your spirit. Right. And one thing that crossed my mind is that evil leaders will produce or will make the, the worst come out, bring the worst out in people. Okay, okay. So uh, a, a leader is just that a leader can do one of two things. They can either uh, produce people to lead in a positive way mm -hmm. or they can produce people to lead in a negative way okay and i think we have to be careful about how we lead people mm -hmm. um god wants us to lead his people in a godly way and god's way is for love and peace and justice and mercy that's right um he doesn't want us to lead in a negative way mm -hmm. and so we have so many leaders who think more highly of themselves than they are uh this king entire uh his heart was so proud and um one of the commentaries said that he thought he was he was trying to be god yeah that's uh, right he that's was right. trying to be god and the, a great responsibility goes with uh with the honor of leadership um the city of tyre suffers because of the leader's personal evil mm -hmm. um the sin he committed was very great the ruler had an overabundance of pride, wealth, and power. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? That's right. And it went to his head. It yeah. doesn't take long for power and wealth to go to your head because once you have wealth, you think you have the power to do anything you want because you have the money to pay your way out or you have money to bribe people or you have money to shut people up or shut people down. Mm -hmm. but, but that is sinful, the sinful nature against God. Um, he, he thought he was so high up that he wanted to be God. But God brings righteous judgment upon people who try to exalt 
or exalt themselves above him. That's right. um, and this is what happened to uh, the nation of Sidon or Zion, a, a sister port of Tyre mm -hmm. and the headquarters of Baal worship. Right. See, they worship the evil. They worship the devil. And so God dealt with them. Holiness is shown in judgment. Mm -hmm. God's judgment. That's good. Uh, holiness is revealed. Yet God promises to restore Israel to the land of the Philistines or to the promised land. So there's a lot to deal with there. Again, um, it's just a mirror reflection. Reflecting yeah. Tyre and Sidon uh, are just reflecting back the nation of, of the United States of America. And Absolutely. we need to learn our lesson or we're going to be destroyed. Okay. Somebody put in the comments that evil attracts evil. Yes. And so that's 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 key right there. Mm -hmm. And so we have to have, um, and that's back to one of the points from yesterday, how our behavior should reflect who we say we are. Right. And so if we say we are believers, if we say we follow Christ, then our behavior be, should be of such mm -hmm. that it reflects uh a Christ-like image. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's amazing that before the pandemic, we chose to study the book of Ezekiel. That's and I right. was looking at the book of Ezekiel, and as I looked through it, I said, oh, my goodness, all this imagery, yeah. all this, uh, you know, all this vi these visions right. that God is showing to Ezekiel, all these things he's speaking to, to Ezekiel, I really didn't see the relevance mm -hmm. of a study in the book of Ezekiel. But as we study the book of Ezekiel, we see that it mirrors exactly what's happening today. That's right. Uh, in our society today, evil rulers, people being boastful, people being greedy and hungry for money and power and wealth. Um, it, it's, it's amazing how this book mirrors uh, uh, um, present day, present day activities. Okay. And situation. Well, Lady Kim, the, the hour is getting away from us. We we want to pause and um, see if there are any uh, questions or any um, prayer requests. And uh, next five minutes, we're going to go ahead and have prayer. And then uh, you can inform us about some of the different things that's happening in the life of the church. Mm -hmm. And um, But we're certainly <laughs> grateful for each of you on the call. I see some other people have joined us since... You did the roll call earlier, but we thank you for being a part of this study. And we're in now the 29th chapter of Ezekiel. And uh, do you want to stop there? You want to close that one out? Is that a, that's a pretty extensive chapter, or you want to move and just start there next week? Um, let's do 29, then we'll start with 30 on okay. next week. All right. Because um, there's a message for Israel there. All right. Um, and the prophecy is uh, Egypt was to... Uh, fall looking ahead to when Babylon conquered Egypt. Mm -hmm. All right. Egypt will reign uh, its normalcy, but never reach uh, the prominence that she once enjoyed. God allowed a Babylonian conquest of Egypt, make, making up of Babylon's lack of sufficient reward from Tyre. God used the Babylonians to bring down Egypt and God caused Israel's power to return and restore her authority. So again, let's make this relevant to today. Okay. We do not want to fall to uh, 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 another power. Um, people are talking about a world power, a one world power, one world dominance. Um, a lot of theories going on out there. But we know as Christians that if we trust and believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, He's going to take us out of this world before all that goes mm -hmm. on. So uh, the beginning uh, times, the beginning signs of the world's end, it, they're upon us. That's right. And it's, it's amazing how, um, like you said earlier, the relevance and the connection that you see in terms of what's happening today and what happened during Ezekiel's time. And so we've got to study this word. We've got to make sure that we uh, ask God for understanding and then we ask God for wisdom. And then uh, we ask God to give us the, the willingness to be obedient to his word and worship him. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says they that worship him, ought to worship him in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. And so we, we, that's what we want to do. We want to be what God would have us to be. And none of us are there yet, but praise God, we are 
we are better than we used to be and mm -hmm. uh, we're yet being made and God is uh, working on our behalf. And so we thank God for being a God of grace, a God of mercy, a God of compassion. Even when we look at the end story here in Ezekiel, God still made room for a remnant to be saved and he showed his grace and his mercy so that they would, can be, could be a reflection of what he was trying to accomplish with those who would not listen and to those who were disobedient. Amen. Amen. Can I get an amen? Somebody type amen right there. <laughs> All right. No, no praise reports, no prayer requests, nothing that uh, anyone wants to share. All right. Well, um, well, we do have some prayer requests. I know we okay. have several people who have uh, lost loved ones. Mm -hmm. And so um, I know just today that um, I sent out information about Sister, um, I'm sorry, Brother Ellis Oliver and right. the loss of his mother. Um, that's Sister Evelyn Oliver's mother-in-law, um, Sister Maddie. Oliver, um, and that those services will be held on tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, and also, Brother um, Aaron James in the loss of his grandmother, mm -hmm. and uh, that service was on today. So we want to lift up those two families um, on our prayer list, as well as all of our sick and shut in. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, this thing is... Um, you know this whole this whole situation about this virus. Um, a lot of people are still um, going through, and loved ones who are in the hospital and they can't see mm -hmm. them, and people are suffering and praying. We're praying that people will uh, be able to overcome and come out victorious. But the numbers spiked here in the, in the uh, state of Tennessee over the weekend. And so um, they're talking about everything being opened up again, I think, when? On uh, tomorrow? On oh, tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and I heard someone say just because it's open doesn't mean we have to go. Right. And that's truth. And uh, we're going to be very cautious about how we return mm -hmm. um, to our church services. And I know Pastor's going to speak to that. But um, just because it's open doesn't mean we have to go. We still feel it's too soon that the worst has not passed, but we know that African Americans are the race of people who are uh, affected affected uh, the most by this coronavirus. And so um, it seems to me that some people feel that the economy is more important than people's lives. Right. And so when uh, common sense is not common anymore, then we have to exercise some restraint. That's I said right. when common sense is not common That's anymore, good. we That's have good. to exercise some restraint. So let's be cautious. Again, wear a mask in public, uh, cover coughs and sneezes, wash your hands every time you think about it. If you don't have uh, uh, the opportunity to wash your hands, have hand sanitizer available um, so that you can um, put hand sanitizer <laughs> on your hands. That's right. Mm -hmm. Somebody said that they were tested for the virus because of exposure, and today they called and told told her that uh, it was negative, and she has in bold print, hold my mule while I shout. <laughs> Absolutely so praise right. God for that. And then uh, uh, Sister Gwen says, make sure we pray for uh, Ms. Perkins' older brother. Had surgery yesterday, but he's doing well. And uh, here's another prayer request. Uh, from Sister Marcia West. She asked that uh, she's going to take a series of tests before her surgery at West Cancer Clinic on tomorrow. So I uh, want us to pray for her. And so we're going to lift up all of these requests as we prepare to close. But Lady Kim, what, what announcements or anything else you would like to share as we prepare to come to the close of this? I, I do have one more prayer request. Um, uh, Brother Whitmore sent me a prayer request from a uh, LaShonda at Lowe's, one of the people from Lowe's that mm -hmm. helped us out Okay. during our um, giveaway. Um, she's asking for prayer. We don't know what her uh, concern, prayer concern is, 
But because she had the nerve to reach out and ask for prayer, we know that God is going to hear her prayers and our prayers on her behalf, and he's going to answer. So um, we just thank God for Brother Whitmore passing that information along. Please let LaShonda know that we will be praying for her. Okay. Don't forget tomorrow morning, and if you look at your screen, um, they're going to put the information there tomorrow morning, Inspirations in the Morning with Dr. Murray, 7 o'clock to 7.15 uh, Central Standard Time in the morning, 7 a.m., um, for uh, a short meditation and prayer in the morning. And then on Wednesday, um, we will have a Bible study, noon Bible study. And the Golden Ministry uh, has a, a number for that. I hope uh, uh, Sister Theron can put that on the screen also, the number for Bible study. Um, for the new Bible study via the telephone. They, they're studying the same thing, Ezekiel. Um, they will do chapters 25 through 29 on this coming Wednesday. And also, don't forget to join us for worship service 945. We are not yet meeting in person. We are not yet meeting in person. We still think it's a little too soon for that. We want to see those numbers come down. Um, but we will hope you will join us here um, online at 945 Central Standard Time on this coming Sunday. Okay, and we're working on um, a survey, Lady Kim, and some information that we're going to send out uh, to our members, and uh, Ms. Theron is going to post that on all of our social media sites so that people will know how we're going to phase our way into this new season that we're getting ready to go into. We're not going to rush back. We're not going to be in a hurry. And so it's going to probably be uh, probably June, uh, sometimes uh, maybe even the late, latter part of June. But we're still trying to just see how things work out uh, for the next couple of weeks, and then we'll make some uh, determination as to how we're going to phase everything mm -hmm. in. And we know that we'll definitely – there will definitely be changes once we absolutely, meet. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. We won't be able to give those holy hugs no, that we, no, we're so used to. No. We won't be able to shake hands like we used to. We right. won't be able to come to the altar uh, for prayer in a mass group like we used right, to. Right. So a lot of things are going to look different and feel different. But guess what? We're going to get back to we're at no, least seeing good. each other that's right. in person. And that's going uh, to be a great day when we can see each other in person. That's again. right. Somebody somebody told me the other day jokingly that uh, the Lord had to cause a pandemic to happen so I wouldn't be telling uh, the people at church to turn to your neighbor <laughs> and you're talking to the wrong neighbor. He said, now, Pastor, you won't be able to do none of that. So you you got to just go and exercise that out, move that out of your <laughs> little repertoire. Of way, huh? yep, and go on just preach the word. Yeah. You're not no going to be able to talk to your, to your neighbors. neighbors, give your neighbor a high fly, high five, and you're talking to the wrong neighbor. Uh -uh. So I'm going to divorce myself from that process. When we come back, we're just going to go straight, and and then um, we're going to do it that way. So, all right. Well, um, what's happening this Sunday, Lady Kim? You just bounced right by that. I don't know. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, it's so many. Right, right. Yes, I was wondering. our day. I was Ladies, wondering. Mother's Day. Yeah. So happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's to Day. To all the mothers. Yeah. Surrogate mothers. That's right. Aunts who act as mothers. Grandmothers who act as mothers. Uh, all, all the mothers and mother figures. Happy Mother's happy Day Happy Mother's to Day. You. And we wish we could be there to give you a hug, but no more hugging. Sad about that. Maybe right. an elbow bump. Right. Uh, but happy Mother's happy Day. Happy Mother's and Day. And then we do have one very, very important announcement. On this coming Wednesday, May the 6th, it was a significant day in our lives. That's right. That's right. That 40 years 40 ago. 40 years ago. Tiffany Latrice Murray, Murray. Richmond was born, born into, into this, this world. world. Uh, so, Rich Tiffany, a happy 40th birthday. Yes, we have a child that's turning 40, 40 years, years old. old. That's right. That's right. So, Tiffany will be 40 years old. So I you think all she's on the, on the uh, wish Tiffany 
Oh, Wish yeah. Tiffany Bible a happy study. birthday. Yeah. Her yeah. birthday is Wednesday. When you see her, just blow her a kiss. Send her a card in the mail or something, okay? Well, you can send it to the church. That's right. Let me tell you what happened. Uh, let me tell the audience what happened. Uh, last week, and I've been telling Lady Kim this for a while, I said, well, I'm going I'm, I believe I'm going to go ahead and learn how to cook and um oh my <laughs> I knew it was coming. I said uh and I I believe if I go ahead and put my mind to it now I could I would be the best cook in the house. And so guess what happened? Was it Friday? Yes. It was Friday. Somebody say Friday. Not good Friday, but it was this past Friday. It was a Friday. good Friday for me, okay? <laughs> I cooked some fried fish. He fried some catfish. And I'm telling you uh before I knew it, it was it was it was gone, it was gone, and yes. uh, it was delicious. That was probably some of the best fried catfish that I have had uh, in the last at least forty years. <laughs> all right, for all of you all who don't know, this is the baby boy of his family. Oh, didn't have to cook. He didn't have to cook. None of that. He didn't have to. Do go anything. To the Just sit down and he go. He didn't have to do right. anything, okay? Right. So. No um, fault of my own. Uh, no fault of his own. But, anyway, he did cook, and it was good. It was, he, he fried some fish on Friday, of course, with my help. He told me, he said, I want to I wanna learn how to do that, so. Um, I got it. I got, got that. It. He got it down. We might right. have fish every time I cook for right now, but I got that <laughs> fish down. I, I got told that. him it takes, uh, he has to wait until he gets in the hundreds of That's fried right. fish That's for right. it to be excellent. Isn't that right, cooks? All right. But here's what, here's what we're going to do, and we're closing. Um, I told um, Lady Kim this past Sunday, I said, look, now, uh, it's Mother's Day. We're not going to be able to go out and do all of that. I said, uh, me and Noah got, got y'all. Y'all just come in, kick your shoes off, relax, and we're going we're gonna to take care of everything. <laughs> all right, let's have a prayer. We're going home. Go ahead, Lady Kim, close us out. God, we thank you. We bless you and we honor you. We thank you that we can laugh because laughter is like medicine to the soul. We ask, oh God, that you would continue to watch over, bless, and keep our Atop Church family. God, we thank you for their lives. We thank you for keeping us and watching over us and protecting us. Even the ones, oh God, who have um, been cured or have been healed from the coronavirus. Yes, We've yes, had God. a few, God, in our congregation. Yes, God. And we thank you for healing them, oh God, that death did not come nigh their dwelling. We ask, God, that you would provide all our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. There are some people, oh God, who are struggling to make ends meet. There are some people, God, who d they don't know how they're going to pay their bills. But, God, you know that uh, through this pandemic, you've already worked it out you've on their behalf. So we thank you tonight, God, and we bless you. God, we ask in the name of Jesus that uh, those who are suffering from any other type of illness, that you would just touch their bodies and heal them, God. We ask, oh God, that you would comfort the bereaved tonight, God, yes, that God. you would just stop by the Oliver household, God, and comfort them. Stop by the James household and comfort them. There are many others who have already lost loved ones and the services have gone on. We ask that you would comfort them today, God, because... You know, grief is a process, God. And so we ask, oh God, that you would continue to bless them and comfort them and bring them through that when they're in their time of grief, you just remind them that their loved one rests with you and they're in good hands. Thank you, God. And that they might be uh, restored of their joy right early. We thank you, we bless you, we honor you. And God, we know that when this pandemic is over, we're going to be better as a result. Restore us, O oh God, as a nation. Restore us, O oh God, as a people of God. Restore us, O oh God, as the church body. Restore us that when we come back together, we might come running in, O oh God, praising and worshiping and glorifying your holy name. We thank you for the consistency of your people in giving. We thank you for your consistency 
of your people in worship via virtually we thank you for the consistency of your people who have come to make sure worship goes forth uh via the airwaves and we love you and we thank you and we bless you and we honor you and we give you praise honor and glory this do your holy name in jesus name we pray amen and thank amen god. praise god well y'all be blessed be safe and by all means be prayerful and know that God has not forgotten about you. We love you, and we can't wait to see you again real soon. So take care. Have a fantastic rest of the day, and we'll see you real soon. Bye.